I'd like to have an argument, please. Anyway, I did. You most certainly did not. Now, let's get one thing quite clear. <laughs> I most definitely told you. You did not. Yes, I did. You did not. Yes, I did. Didn't. Yes, I did. Didn't. Yes, I did. But this is futile. No, it isn't. I'll okay. get up a contrary position. But it isn't just saying, no, it isn't. Games just are, are designed more around their mechanics. I mean, but at the most, same time, most... to say that, like, all video game stories are, are shit, it's Sorry, like, well, I mean... You okay, first you don't count. No, you said, tell me what you said. That is a good story. Have a good day. The climate for discussion within the last few years hasn't necessarily been the most inviting. Often, expressing a small idea or passive comment, sometimes without even knowing it, can have you chastised or completely looked down upon by a person or group of people. This started off a bit more naturally in the political realm, but it slowly found its way into almost all aspects of culture, one of those being creative media our films, and TV. It came to be that if you found yourself holding a certain opinion of a certain movie, that you could get labels placed on you pretty quickly and unforgivingly, regardless of why you held those opinions of that piece of media in the first place. There were some extraordinarily well-developed YouTube videos that criticized some movies and TV shows, with their arguments often being well-informed and really thought through, with evidence to support. But because the videos happened to be long, they often got the short end of the stick. These creators and videos were receiving some unfair criticism from people who were refusing to listen to the entirety of their arguments to begin with. Hence the birth of the insult of Longman. I no longer thought there was a voice within media that reflected my own thoughts about these movies and TV shows. For me, this started all the way back when the last Star Wars movie came out, and I felt really alone within my own friend group. I remember we all went to a diner after the movie was over to talk about what we thought, and, well, I was alone in my opinions. But this isn't about me. I'm sharing this because I believe that my experience reflects one of many. I believe the reason EFAP has become more and more popular, along with some other channels, is because of this feeling. The feeling of wanting to feel understood, and having a place that allows, hell even encourages, discussions about ideas and opinions of media on a deeper level. So that's how I found myself engaging with the EFAP community. Just in case you are unfamiliar with EFAP or potentially have heard misleading things, it's important to understand that this is the main philosophy and idea that drives the channel. Mahler, Fringy, and Rags all try their best to maintain this standard, a standard of thoroughly exploring an idea until they come to, dare I say, an objective understanding of what makes good storytelling, or in some cases, just what is true. So, now that we have that under our belt, we can fast forward to EFAP's 2023's New Year's Eve stream. To be clear, I'm not here to break down all the arguments made on either side, or to thoroughly explain the opinions of each person, as that would be missing the more essential discussion to be had at hand. The reason why I'm writing this is because as I listened to Doomer get more and more upset, I honestly heard myself within him. Now hold up, I know that sounds silly. I just mean that I've been there. As embarrassing as it is to admit, I used to be really bad at taking criticism, in any form, or even being told that my opinions may be predecessed on a false notion. Hell, I still need to work on it sometimes today, especially if the opinion I hold is something that I have put a great deal of thought into over a long period of time. So for me, I was emotionally tied to what was going on in this discussion, but I also thought that maybe I could add to the conversation, since I think this will be a memorable moment for a lot of the EFAP community, maybe it's better to use it as an example to learn and grow on. I'll make this brief, but let's give some context before getting into it about what was said, just so you have a clue about what was going on. The discussion at hand was about stories within video games, and this is how it started off. Yeah, like, I, I'm just, I'm a massive, uh, I hate cutscenes. I hate them. You and hate the cutscenes? Has so many cutscenes. So, the initiating comment was Doomer stating that he hates cutscenes. 
Now, EFAP consists of people who have admitted to loving storytelling. That's kind of their whole shtick. And often that is a central focus of their commentary. So as self-professed storytelling lovers, disliking cutscenes in video games naturally piqued their interest. Way later on in the argument, when Doomer asks why they even cared, they do explain the sentiment. Or try to. Like, I don't, well, I don't understand. I'm not I, saying I, there's anything sure, wrong I, with it. I just don't like it. No, but I think it, uh, I've been trying to explain the contention that we have with it would be, because uh, I'm, I'm setting forth the premise. The, the medium you're most passionate about is film, correct? Yeah. So. Okay, so it would be similar to saying like, oh, well, I don't yeah. ever want to give a shit about the cutscenes in a game would be like saying, hey, what's your favorite film score? And you'd be like, oh, I don't give a shit about the music in movies. You're like, well, or, do you have a problem with me not liking storytelling in video games? Is there something wrong with the fact that I don't like that? Maybe it's um, just that we I feel like we, if you're not giving like them a chance, out, like, yeah. yeah. Well, that's where we started and we dug into it and we got to the cutscenes thing. If, if, if it feels like you're not giving like a whole medium a chance to potentially impress you with storytelling, like I'd say- So here is Doomer's next statement. Yeah, like I, I'm just, I'm a massive, uh, I hate cutscenes. I hate them. You hate the cutscenes? Story has so many cutscenes. No, well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't care about Hold story on, in video games. I don't, I don't care about stories in video games. Again, as a community whose entire content focuses on dissecting storytelling, this was another statement which was confusing to them. And Fringy then asks for an explanation, and here is what Doomer had to say. No, well, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't care about Hold story on, in video games. I, Dude, I don't what? give. A, I've never played a video game with a story I gave a shit about. Not in my whole life. Wow, life. I don't what? understand. You're one. So oh, no, 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 no. I asked it's you for a, for a bad it's take like two hours ago. I didn't I'm say no. I might have to give you a reading list. <laughs> God, okay, wait. Damn. Come on, that like, can't be true. You never cared about a story in a game? Now, this statement is quite bold, especially since we find out later on that he has played video games for 30 years. I've been playing video games for 30 years! What are you talking about? I've been playing video games for 30 fucking years! I've been playing video games for 30 fucking years. So saying that in all that time there was never a game in which there was a story one cared about is quite a claim. However, this is still a statement that stands within the grounds of his own experience and can be subjective. It is not until the next statement that it crosses the line into an objectionable claim. This is where Mahler and others were able to sink their teeth into something that's a little more provable. And as lovers of storytelling and video games, they were quite passionate about this, as you probably can tell. Let's continue on. True, dude, you have to think of something. I what games have you dude, played? Fucking, what games most you games barely have a story. I mean, you have a full of shit. Like, barely what, have a story what game, at all. What, what, what you, the fucking what story to Zelda what, what, or fucking what? Mario? Like, uh, what story? Uh, dude, Jack yeah. Most games barely have a story. Now that is a claim. Next, Doomer opens Steam and immediately finds a game that has a story that he has enjoyed, causing this to happen. It's, it's pretty funny that All right. you, I'll, like, I'll, what I'll, games I'll, have you played this year, out of curiosity? Let's, let's, crank up, let's crank up Steam. I'll go, I'll go down my fucking Steam list. Dude, crank it up. Okay, Steam. New Vegas. New Vegas has a good story. Man. Yeah, so wow, so your bullshit. statement is invalid already. Nice. <laughs> yeah, GG. <laughs> first thing Got you him. saw, Get fucked, wreck loser. yourself. Well, what's what the first thing I saw? I'm, I'm going happen. through like a hundred games. I see one. It so doesn't far. matter if you. You just said that was a good one. You said there's no good story you ever played. For this next section of my video, I will be letting a large portion of the discussion play out. It has been edited down the most it can be while still maintaining its integrity, with enough remaining so that you can hopefully get a solid understanding. So buckle in, this part is a bit long. But again, instead of focusing on the exact arguments being made, focus on the tone and the emotional inflection on Doomer's responses as the discussion continues, for that is the main purpose of my video. So so when I say that I don't give a fuck about stories in video games, what you're concerned with is the exact data point of zero games with good stories. You're not like... No, didn't you jump in donkey? Sorry. If there's, if there's one, then that means sure there can none. be more. If you, I pretty, didn't you just say? I'm sorry, I need to find out. What did you say? Hold on. If, but well, if there's no, one, I then said, that can be all. I hate cutscenes, and I don't give a fuck about stories no, and video games. Well, I just want to play the game. What well, you said is you never I played a video game. Everybody. Everybody. What, what you, what you, so what oh. you said is you've never played a single video game with a story you've given a shit about. 
What does oh, okay. that mean? What does that mean? It, it means that I don't give a fuck about stories in video games. I play for the gameplay. I don't like if I want a story, I'll watch a movie or read a book. I won't play a video game. Then why did you why oh did you then need to go through your like Steam list to talk about good or bad like stories in and video games? Because, you saw because I asked him to New Steam. Vegas is loaded. He acted like that was a completely <laughs> fucking insane statement. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go check. It, and I found one. There's New Vegas has a pretty good story. I don't see a that single That was like the other first game you even I, mentioned. I, 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 <laughs> So, I, but what I mean, that's what like the story is told like, well I, without cutscenes. I, I yeah, like in, in what game are we talking Metroid about? Prime. The, Prime. the hypothetical game that he mentioned. Well, uh, hypothetical, yeah, a game that has it's no already theoretically it's possible, also... so you can just agree with the theoretical, right? Yeah. So yeah. like no cutscenes, it's all in gameplay. Like while you're exploring freely, you can move about how you want, interact with the world how you want, and get the story at your own pace. Journey. <laughs> is, Journey is there an is example this... of this? Journey. Uh, you just said journey. Well, you don't yeah. actually oh, don't need an example, is. though. That's the point. Okay. You don't um, need one, though. Yeah. I do, because I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, Did what you, you know that it's an indicator of low? Have you never played a game without cutscenes? Engage with hypothetical. I've never played a game without cutscenes that have a story that I gave a shit about. Oh my god, you don't know what environmental storytelling is? Okay, give me an example. If this is such a fucking obvious thing, then give me an example. You gotta, you gotta stop doing that. Like. A lot of people are pointing out Half Life has no like cutscenes. It's all in gameplay, yeah. like in engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, Metroid Prime is another one that has like cutscene at the beginning and the end of the game, but like more or less, it's just going through the environment at your own pace. It's if you play a lot of stealth games, you could just well, skip what's the, cut the story of Metroid the story. Prime? Well, Soma's pretty limited on cutscenes. There's hardly any. But it's all a story that you gleam at your own pace. It's something that video games are uniquely positioned to do: environments of storytelling. Yeah, I don't Dark Souls and whatnot. Whatnot. If I have the option to take the story at my own pace, then I'll just ignore it. But I mean, that, that, that's what I mean. You, I feel like it takes us so that. bad you could argue against them. <laughs> like that. You, that it's is not even. Okay, first of all, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. no. Now I'm fucking triggered. This isn't a take. I'm not saying story and games are bad. I'm saying I don't give a fuck about them. They, okay? gave, they gave you counters different. to your argument and you went all the way back to, no, no, I don't no, no, care, no, no, no. though. I'm not making a prescription that video games shouldn't have fucking stories. No, you didn't pay I'm attention to how the argument went. Anything. They gave you a counter care. and you said, I don't care. Yeah, I, d I don't care about it. I've never enjoyed it. Your it's initial state was value. fucking it's inaccurate. I care about. But, Doomer, I, well, I is mean, there such a game that has a good story without cutscenes? The answer is yes, both theoretical and with proven examples. And then you went, but I don't care about it. That's a fucking shit response. I get no, over okay. it. You're telling, you're telling me you think it's good. I'm telling you, I wouldn't give a no, fuck. No, you said, tell me about game. a game that is a good, a good story that doesn't uh, have cutscenes. You were giving examples, bitch. Worry, Happy I... New Year, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's not what happened, though. Like, did I did I at any point so, say there's something so wrong with? No, stop, 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 stop. Let me talk. Did I at any point say there's something wrong with storytelling in video games, or that you're wrong for liking storytelling in video games, or there's something wrong with cutscenes? Did I make any claim like this at all, or did I just say that I personally don't like it? I don't like it. I don't like it. No, but, My, so again, look, again, because we, it'd be nice to at least like sort of pin down on this one thing was that you asked for example. Like, if the claim is, I don't give a fuck about stories and games, I hate cutscenes, it follows that a logical question that somebody might put forth is like, well, what about, like, environmental storytelling in games? And then you even, like, asked for examples. You asked for examples, and then when the examples were provided I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not asking for examples you to did. prove that storytelling in video games suck. No, shut the fuck up. You I'm did. I'm not asking for examples to prove that it's bad. I'm asking for you to give me examples <laughs> to figure out if I would give a shit about them, and you didn't present any examples that I would yes, care about. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah, you oh, said so that you, you presented you said something that, you... that I care about. No, sorry. If you say that you hate cutscenes, and that, like, that seems to be a big barrier in terms of your enjoyment of a game, like, and whether or not you'd want to engage with a story, if you get presented with examples of games that don't have cutscenes that tell a story, how can you not factor that into your assessment? Like, how is that something that you... You are not understanding me. The fact that there isn't a cutscene doesn't mean that I'm suddenly going to give a shit about the storytelling in the game. I don't care That's, about so that. So again, the discussion... Yeah, me on the so then why the fuck did you bring up cutscenes? You should have just said I don't care about story and video games full stop. The cutscene was the point. Like that's well, that's the only thing I said. I, said I, don't, the I didn't point. like the then fucking the story. The environmental storytelling is very like the... relevant. Yeah. If cutscenes were can... the point, then the well, can... environmental storytelling okay. is hyper okay. relevant. Let, as, let's as let's just example. let's make this very simple. I was on that I'm part. asking for you. To, I'm I'm giving you an opportunity to be like, hey, maybe I'm wrong, and you didn't give me anything that changed my mind. I gave you examples of good stories that don't have cutscenes, or at least you, the minimum. You think you're good stories. 
How the fuck am I going to give you yeah. examples of what you think are good stories? That's what, see, again, Dude. you're treating it like a fucking debate. I was just asking for, okay. You asked you me for the examples. Story? What do you mean? Yeah, and I don't <laughs> agree with your examples. Hey, Mola, can you provide me examples of what I like? Oh, you can't. What's got you? The thing is, is that you it's can't. A, you're you treating can't, it like a debate. Can't. It was never a fucking debate. I just told you I don't oh, like sorry. stories and video games. Oh, yeah, you said God. something dumb. I, I did nothing like wrong. Them. No you matter fucking what you idiots. I did nothing wrong. Jesus Christ. Oh, I know you feel that way, but it was really straightforward. You fucked yourself over when you said that. It was straightforward. I just told you I don't like something. I didn't say anything about it being bad or wrong. Why would you ask us for examples of things we couldn't possibly provide? It would only be you that could provide that. Why would you ask us for it? Because you're fucking arguing with me. You're acting like what I'm saying is insane. And I'm like, okay, fine. So, to be fair, what you're saying is insane. And I'll reconsider my position. To be fair, what you're saying is insane, by the way, just for the matter. I, I just think it's just, Oh yeah, it's insane to have a preference. Oh, okay. No, that's not that's at all what I said. <laughs> that's not what I said. I don't know. I don't know how you've gotten onto this thing where this like should be a debate. This is equivalent to me saying I don't like horror movies, and you respond as though I'm saying that horror movies. If you'd movies said are bad. I don't like horror movies, that's and I said why, and you happened. said because I don't like acting, I would have had the same fucking issues with you. Yeah, that that's what that's more what I was getting at with you the music. Said you don't I think it's that you're. Example. Yeah, you. But like, yeah, I think that we understand your premise as. No, I don't. Have, I don't think you do, or you wouldn't be arguing with me. Dude, Listen, DSP has played a lot of video games. Out, it's, but when you're playing them, do you do you care about the, like? Are you watching the cutscenes? Are you paying attention to the story? Or are you just figuring out okay, what's I my goal like for it. the next thing? You but try dude, not. Do you, like, do you think that I'm just put on Earth? And I just like, no, I was like, oh, I just fucking hate video game stories. And I've just been avoiding them. No, it's because I've played them for my entire life. And I've never well, given a shit. It doesn't affect my, me the way I, that it affects I you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong you with your experience. one or two that you really didn't care about or didn't like it, when, when you first started can playing you, video you, games. Okay, can you please it, fucking believe me that I've, that I've been, I've played a lot of fucking video games. Okay. Literally no, 30 I, I years. Do. I, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm, what I'm does saying it look that like if, when if you're you... playing a game, like with a cutscene, like when the yeah, cutscene starts, you, like you're watching you it. Pull out your phone? Phone? So the first thing I'm going to do is press escape Leave to try and get through it. Then I'm going to press <laughs> spacebar to try and get through That's it. That's my point. Well, uh, because you're you challenging me. Because, because, because he's changed. Run. Because so he's retconning the conversation. No, I'm not retconning the fucking conversation. If you guys are going to jump down my fucking throat and act like I'm a fucking moron, it's like, okay, well, hey, I don't how know. about Maybe I'll you be should open relax to this. We're not what, what video games? No. Listen, literally, dude, well, you, you said something tell. dumb, and then you said a smart thing after it. I didn't say anything That's stupid. That's all that no, happened. I'm not, I'm not letting it go this time. This has happened several times. I'm not letting it go this time. I didn't say anything stupid. You guys are being fucking stupid. Definitely. Did he though? Yeah, that's why it yeah. triggered everybody else. He, he said, "He said, give me he examples, and here's the examples." Example. And he said, "Fuck them, I don't like them anyway because I don't like stories." Like what? Well, then don't ask for examples. Just like you know, keep that well, as you your central point. I don't like stories in video games. Some examples, and then you gave some examples. He's like, "Well, no, I don't actually prefer these." No, so he no, he said he doesn't fucking care about the examples. Yeah, yeah. He that's that's, that's literally where the that's where the, the conversation there. broke. Right. It's a really simple area for where the conversation broke. He misspoke. He should have said, "Oh, I, I, I did not misspeak. There was nothing that I said that was a never misspeak." Mind. Why did I, I don't try? Understand. <laughs> Fool that you are, Mahler. Fool yeah. that you are. <laughs> it, Remember, it was. I've never played yeah. a game with a story. Okay. What does that mean okay. if you okay. skip okay. the cutscene? Okay. 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 This is just too supremely autistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried to cut that up as fairly as I could, trying not to make either party look better or worse, just as it was. It is quite a long discussion, and I heavily recommend that you listen to the whole thing for full context. Here are the timestamps for the discussion, and the link to the video is in the description. Now, as you can probably tell, Doomer got more and more emotional and upset as the conversation went on. He got extraordinarily defensive, with his tone and voice rising. His use of swearing became more abundant and aggressive as it continued on. Are you trying to find some fucking quote that you can sit there and fucking stunlock on? And he also began to make it more personal. You guys are being fucking stupid. No matter you fucking what you idiots! Say, I did nothing wrong! So no, shut the fuck up. So, in summary, the main problem that was occurring was not the fact that they disagreed with his sentiment, even though that may be true, they were disagreeing with the way he was reframing the discussion and what had been said. Even Mahler makes this clear here. What yeah, is and that, then what we said, have you ever done? played a game with a good story without cutscenes? And you said, give me an example, as if it's not possible. I, and then we that did. Is a, that's, yep. okay, again, you're That's the part that I'm stuck I on. Said. I don't care about that I'm opening asking... foundation. So, 
Doomer was repeatedly trying to say that he had said something else, even causing Fringy to have to go back to double check what Doomer had said. Again, so again, there were a couple of times when, I, because I was legitimately struggling to like remember like exactly what had been said, that I went back, found out what it was. Causing a slight gaslit feeling. And at a certain point, it slowly transitioned away from this discussion about opinions on video game storytelling to a debate about something that was occurring on a subtextual level, at least in Doomer's perspective. Even Doomer hints at something going on a bit more underneath the scenes at a certain point. I didn't say anything it, stupid. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not letting it go this time. This has happened several times. I'm not letting it go this time. I didn't say anything stupid. Now, you might be familiar with this feeling. When someone disagrees with an opinion you may have, the immediate urge or defensiveness that may arise from that. For example, you can be in the middle of an argument and maybe you realize you are wrong. But rather than stopping and admitting that mistake, it's too hard. It's more important that you stand your ground due to this defensive behavior. Actually, sometimes when this happens within arguments, it can even cause a person who suddenly realizes they've made a mistake to get even more aggressive. Not only is this common, but many psychologists believe this is to be a learned survival mechanism. To quote, Psychological defensiveness is an evolved self-protective response, and in some mild forms may have some benefits such as helping us to bounce back after failures and helping us to maintain optimism and self-esteem, but defensiveness also has its costs, and I think we can often see those. So why does this matter? Like why am I making this video? This matters because being able to reflect and identify when this feeling may be happening to you or even being able to recognize when this feeling is happening to someone else when in a disagreement, it can really help with communication and the strength of a relationship or friendship in general, especially when we want to try to have these broader scale discussions about really important topics, having the skill to be able to regulate this feeling and prevent it from keeping you from having an open mind is critical. Even some of the greatest philosophers, when having these grand debates in those really cool fancy halls, would have this mantra they basically would open their debates with. And it was along the lines of, in more plain English, quote, remember that we are attacking and tearing at your ideas to see if they can withstand. We are not attacking your person. We cannot get anywhere with our discussions if you continue to confuse the two. I think here several of the EFAP cast recognize that this is what was occurring within Doomer. Dude, M, you should be you should be the one that annihilates him the most. You know, you do a lot of gaming stuff. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, but the, the thing is, is that even he knows that this is a stupid thing. To say. <laughs> and, oh, that's like, actually the most aggressive thing you've ever said. Also, Mahler was a little drunk, which may be why he was a little bit louder than usual. I get oh, over it. You're telling you're telling me you think it's good. I'm telling you, I wouldn't give no! a fuck. No. But you can tell that Doomer almost felt like a hurt dog. This really isn't on my script that I'm reading in front of me, but if you can imagine a scenario where a dog has been hurt or it feels neglected and you reach a hand out to try to help it, it naturally barks and bites back. And that's kind of what this defensive nature feels like if you kind of take a look at it. Anyway, back to my script. So at least this is what I saw when I was listening to Doomer. I think the perfect sentiment was when Metal said, do you need a hug? I can hug you. It's fine. <laughs> Even though it was a joke, there is a hint of truth to it. Recognizing that often this defensiveness is a symptom of someone who feels, either consciously or unconsciously, that they may have been outcasted, they may feel alone, misunderstood, or judged. Now the tricky thing is, even if you can recognize when this is happening to someone, you can't just outwardly state or infer that they are being overly defensive. It's a really simple area for where the conversation broke. He misspoke. He should have said, oh, I, uh, I did not misspeak. There was nothing that I said that was a misspeak. Mind. Why did I, I don't try? Understand. In fact, don't utter the word in any context because the mere mention of the word can only make the situation more explosive. 
oftentimes the person, especially if the conversation has gone on for a bit of time, is well aware of their overly incorrect behavior, and pointing it out can lead to more insecurity and more defensiveness. Rather, Mark the Cyborg probably took the best approach here, although still unsuccessful. You have to walk that one. No, 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 but I, I, but I was, I was trying to put it in, in, in words for you, just so you'd understand, kind of, or at least where I seem to understand it, because I don't want to say, like, you know, speak on behalf of others. But um, oh, I, it was more that you, it seems like you're being very dismissive of an entire element of a medium. Yes, and saying, I am. But I mean, do, do you not see that without a lot of of experience? I've been playing video games for thirty but, fucking years. But, I have probably okay. thirty thousand hours in video games. What are you talking okay. about? Need more experience? I played I so many know, fucking video let, games. How many more <laughs> video games do I need to play? By speaking in a calm tone and trying to explain things by restating what Doomer had said, so that he would feel heard and potentially understood before trying to respond or rebuttal. Unfortunately, here it did not work. But in most cases, this would be a good approach. Because most times, once a person exits a defensive episode like this, they will realize their error and either feel embarrassment, shame, or apologetic. But this is where the self-defeating cycle can come into play. This embarrassment or shame may cause the person to continue this defensive behavior if they feel unsafe sharing that they have recognized their mistake. To continue protecting our ego, our sense of self, they must maintain that state of always being right, and as you may know, it's hard to admit when you may be wrong. And again, this is built into us, and overcoming that is a great feat, and one to be proud of if you have. EFAP, as a whole, also recognizes how hard admitting one was wrong is. When they have had guests come on whose videos they were covering, they often commend them for having the courage to come on, and more importantly, the courage for admitting their mistakes, especially in front of such a large audience. Oh, and I'm glad you were able to let me on and stuff. Cause, uh, Absolutely, it's all good. Very few people do what you've done, and it has yeah. always ended up being a positive for the people who do it. Uh, always, um, uh, always good when people actually come on. It's always, uh, yeah, no, thank you, um, nice. for coming yeah. on. I appreciate it. So, in summary, this happens to us all as an innate instinct to be protective of our ideas because our psyche attaches our sense of self and sometimes our sense of worth to these ideas and can't always tell the difference between an attack on an idea versus the person. And here, in this example that I've tried my best to lay out for you, you can see that Doomer started to see this debate, either consciously or unconsciously, as an attack on his person rather than the idea that he held. And if he's watching this, he probably would disagree or maybe he wouldn't. It depends if he feels comfortable with recognizing the mistake he made. It's a very vulnerable thing to do and can be quite difficult at times. Keep in mind that he was the only one there that held this idea, which may have led to that feeling of isolation and defensiveness quicker than others. Often, I have found that literally saying this exact sentence out loud during or before a conversation can help de-escalate the energy. If you ever get a chance, Give this a try, and let me know how it works for you. For me, as someone who lives in constant existential dread, I potentially have had maybe a more thorough dissection of this problem than most, since the universe and death and the meaning of life and all that fun stuff is literally always on my mind. Often a disagreement on an opinion I held was a deeper cut than just a mere disagreement. It took me some time to figure out, but a disagreement was almost like a disagreement on what I perceived to be reality. Like, what do you mean you don't like ice cream? I know that may sound silly, and it is silly. Or maybe that doesn't make sense to you. But it would really, really bother me, because the world already feels big and scary enough. Like, at least I thought we could agree on the yumminess of ice cream. And I know this is a little off topic, but maybe someone can relate to this. Hold up, actually, my best friend has had to deal with this from me, like, constantly since they've known me, so maybe he can explain it a bit better than I. I just have a question to ask you. Okay. So, I have a bit in this video where I'm trying to explain... You know how interesting it is when, even if we're close friends, if someone has to admit they're wrong, how it can be really hard. Mm -hmm. And like just the weird natural defensive behavior we have as humans. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I kind of tied that into, for me, how it ties. It's like I did it more frequently because uh, of my joking but not joking constant existential dread. So I tried my best to describe it. But then I was like, you know, you know me really, really well. So I guess my question in summary for you is what is my existential dread like? And why does that bleed into my inability to accept opposition even when it's valid? <laughs> Oh my god, uh, that's a doozy of a question. It's fine, you can shit on me all you want, man. Like, it, you can completely throw me under the bus, it's it's okay. <laughs> no, it's not that, my brain kind of feels like an old car trying to start in the cold. It's the thought won't. Maybe I'll just tell you about my video, and then maybe how I thought it tied into me a bit more. You know how I showed you that clip of Doomer getting pretty upset? when they had a disagreement over storytelling in video games. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of morphed into something more grand. It wasn't... It became superheated, I think, for Doomer because he kind of took it personally, you know? Mm -hmm. And got really defensive. And as a result of getting defensive, a lot of times people get aggressive. Some people shut down, but I think it's pretty natural to get aggressive. I talked about, um, like, a, an injured dog, you know? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what Doomer felt like to me. And then... You know, when I was trying to explain why I even bothered making this video, I said, for me, I think it really struck a chord. It struck a chord with me because I have had the honor or gratitude <laughs> or what gracious God gift of you of allowing me to grow through that ugly phase uh, with you because you would be very patient and recognize that that was what was occurring within me. And yeah. instead of someone that might not be able to see what was happening within me uh, you would not push back when not necessary and be patient like extraordinarily patient because you understood that it didn't benefit the situation at all like there's a certain point where we're no longer disagreeing over the flavor of ice cream and it's like just you know not good yeah yeah i can phrase it differently like how have you seen me grow and change in that regard over the last while you have been able to separate how when someone disagrees with an opinion of theirs or with an opinion of yours it they're not attacking at you personally because you used to even if it's not even in like you know an aggressive tone or anything or however you want to put it you would act as if they just like screamed at you and tore your heart out because they don't like chocolate ice cream or something well listen 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 well first off vanilla but also like oh, vanilla so yeah <laughs> but also the reason why i think and this ties into the existentialism the reason why i think i reacted that way often was because of the constant uh, existential dread that i felt do you know what i mean that pit of nothing makes sense and i'm so scared because everything doesn't make sense and it doesn't make sense and it doesn't make sense and when i try to relax and be a human and just you know okay let's focus on the mundane things and come back down to earth okay and i'm just playing a video game or just going yeah. out to grab some ice cream and someone says ew vanilla's gross i look at them and then my entire worldview falls apart because <laughs> the universe doesn't make sense do you know what i'm trying to say yeah, like you had something small that made sense and you're in this little existential nightmare and someone went and challenged it, and everything has shattered now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anybody met me in real life, they would feel the vibration of this existent of this existential dread literally coming out of me. You know, they'd be like, "Oh my god, she's not kidding." What is it you're like? In a, you're in a pretty constant battle of like nothing matters. This is cool. I'll you know enjoy life and whatnot. And also, oh god, nothing matters. Twenty four seven. <laughs> oh my god yeah i think i think recently i've been mostly in the oh god nothing matters thing yeah. um but yes sometimes you'll just like zone out or yeah it, it can be sometimes so anyway that's why this video matters to me because this instance of doomer well you listened to it right did you hear did, yeah. the similarity between old me and doomer in that argument yeah because he wasn't just debating his like voice would raise an octave because he felt like he was being attacked and he's getting like kind of um, panicked defensive. almost almost like he's getting defensive or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> what tip if you could give a tip or two about how to recognize when this is happening to someone like a friend or if you're in a conversation how to know if someone has 
switched from just having a disagreement to taking it on a personal level. If it's a pretty mundane thing and suddenly it's not just like a discussion and they start defending themselves, not the opinion, then you can tell that there's something more going on. They'll start like bringing up personal qualities or, or for example, I've played video games for 30 years or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing video games for 30 years! There are signs that, that you can tell that it feels like they're more de defending themselves rather than their opinion. I know, it's just interesting. I think we can learn from it. And it's funny! Get oh, over it! It's very funny. <laughs> and I just want to be done making this video, man, because I've been editing it for like three weeks. <laughs> So, that'll wrap it up. Thanks for sitting through my analysis of EFAP and Doomer's debate. You're you treating it like a debate! It was never a fucking debate! I just- Uh, conversation. I mean conversation. <laughs> Regardless of whether Doomer or the rest of the gang was right about the storytelling in video games, I find things like this fascinating because I see them as opportunities to gain a deeper understanding of myself, others, and maybe even the world around me. Thanks for watching.